you could call this the first episode of On Second Thought. I know I said in an earlier video that I was going to not completely build the digital field device simulator. But on second thought, I decided I would go ahead and record whatever I had to record in order to show the complete assembly process for the digital field device simulator. So far in the previous video, we assembled all of the major components. The LED backlit push buttons and some toggle switches. In this episode, we're going to install the pilot light and then we're going to start soldering the conductors between the components. And to do that, we're going to need five pieces of black conductor, stranded 22 gauge, stripped on each end, three and a half inches in length, approximately. Stranded 22 gauge, black insulation. Five red insulated 22 gauge stranded and a dozen blue stranded 22 gauge three and a half inches in length. Now the 22 gauge or smaller is important. The color is unimportant. The electrons don't know the difference between red, black, blue, green, white, whatever insulation. But typically I use blue for inputs, green for outputs, of course red for positive, black for negative. There are going to be some other lengths of conductor involved. We will mention them as we go. So the first thing we're going to do is pre-prepare some of the devices that we want to solder conductors to them outside of the enclosure, then install them in the enclosure, and then solder the other end of the conductors into the series of push buttons and lights. So let's let's have at this. Okay, this is the pilot light. And I want you to notice that I have it clamped into a cheap clamp, inexpensive clamp. And notice that the centers on the pads are just slightly off in this direction from the surface or the the area of the pilot light that I'm grabbing. That way it kind of keeps it locked in. Now what I've done is I've uh, pushed the stripped end of a piece of black wire up under the negative terminal. Now I know it's a negative terminal because I tested this with my power supply and I put a black mark on the label to show which is the negative lead because I'm going to do I'm going to solder a red lead onto the other side. Uh, these devices cannot take a lot of heat either, so excessive heat will dislodge the uh, conductors from the LED inside the barrel from the solder lug inside the barrel. So when you solder these, uh, you start applying heat, you melt the solder, and as soon as you see the solder wet into the conductor, then you pull off. Okay, so that's the negative side. Now I'm going to flip it around and I think I will rotate it a little to a better position so the eyelet is on the upside and I'm going to slide in the stripped end of a red conductor and you don't want to make too big of a, a connection on either one of these because they do have to slip in the hole. Now notice that I try to get the insulation to extend past the edge of that little dam between the two conductors. That way I don't get any accidental shorting. So now we'll come in here and we'll do the same thing on this side. It, it takes a little practice to get the right touch for how much heat it's going to take to get a good solder joint. But there you have it. Now this was a four inch black wire and the red wire is long enough to extend from the upper half of the box, the enclosure, to the lower half because uh, we're going to need to jumper this red wire into a group of other red wires, whether we do it with the terminal strip or we solder them together and use shrink tubing, that's up to you. So this is the pilot light. That was the pilot light. Now there are many different uh, configurations for 24 volt DC pilot lights. Um, all of them are probably going to be LED. 
that's just one particular one that I use a lot. It doesn't matter what you use. I want to warn you that the hole on that enclosure is the smaller size. That way, if you have a larger diameter barrel on your pilot light, you can always bore it out. And remember, I showed you the tool. It's in the instructions that come with the enclosure that you can use to carefully ream that hole out to a size that fits your pilot light. Now, a couple other items that we have to do are the bulkhead connectors. These are the dual connectors that hook on, uh, rather they insert into the bottom half of the box and they're wired in parallel. So you can jumper 24 volts DC into the box from the power adapter and back out to another box. So there's two of them wired in parallel. So let's, let's prepare those. Okay, now we're going to solder some leads on the bulkhead connectors. And I want you to notice that I have the plug from the 24 volt DC power adapter plugged into this bulkhead connector. That's because when I apply heat to this center connection, it can soften up the plastic around it and deform or displace that pin inside the center of this barrel. So by having this plugged in, it not only removes a little bit of heat, but it also holds it in position until it's cooled off. I can't see what the camera sees here, but I'm going to take my soldering paste and apply just a little bit on the end of this red wire. And I don't know how well you can see it, but then I'm going to take and slide the red wire into the socket on this pin. That soldering paste does two things. The most important thing is that when you apply heat, it cleans the surfaces and makes for a faster wetting solder joint and a better solder joint. It also does a double duty of making a little stiction or a little uh, sticky to hold that wire in there because remember gravity is holding this wire in there right now and if I bump this wire I may knock it out of that position so I'm going to carefully bring in the pencil and get a little solder going down into that pocket there we go and there we have it now typically I will take and slide a piece of heat shrink tubing over the center conductor to make sure that there's no way that the negative side can short to it. Now I'm going to turn this over and do the negative side. And for the negative side, I just lay it in there because I'm going to trim off from the other side. Uh, it probably makes for easier construction if you have them both rolled in the same direction like that. So let's uh, bring in a little heat and a little solder. This is somewhat awkward trying to do this for the camera instead of in the most opportune position. So get the heat in there, get some solder melting, and you don't have to be real careful with this particular connection because it can handle quite a bit of heat, but you wanna make sure it's well soldered. Once it's had a chance to cool off, and you can see that the surface turns slightly dull. Not, It's still shiny. It should never go real dull. If it does, that means you got a bad joint. So now we can take and release this out of the clamp and take it off the end of the plug. And you see that it's stuck through far enough to short. I simply grab some side cutters and trim that off. It's not shorting, but I would still like a piece of heat shrink tubing on the red wire to make sure that if this gets pushed over, there's no way that it can short. Okay, that, that takes care of the three devices or objects or parts, components that needed conductor solder to them outside of the box. That way when we insert them, uh, try to solder the conductors into the center solder well on those bulkhead connectors while they're inside the box is much more cumbersome than outside the box using a clamp. So we're going to stop here and then 
we're going to start up again working with the box and we're going to begin soldering the major components together. Thank you.